Hi, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for your time today. I'm Steve Winslow. I'm with the Linux Foundation, and I'm going to talk to you today about walking the open source trail towards supply chain integrity and security. And before we jump in, as a framing for my talk, I wanted to share um, a couple months ago, I took a short vacation out to Western Massachusetts, out to the Berkshires. And while I was on a hike there, I was very surprised to find the open source trail. Uh, this is a real hiking trail out in Western Massachusetts, it turns out. And uh, I'm going to try to use this as a, uh, a framing today for my talk as an analogy for the path that companies walk in their engagement with open source, and also uh, as an analogy for the broader community's steps towards improving integrity and security and transparency in software development. So we'll try this as an analogy and we'll see how it goes. Um, so when a, when a company first starts proactively using open source, when they start down the open source trail, the trail is pretty well marked. The advantages of using open source are, are pretty clear. And you've heard from a number of the other speakers today about all the benefits that come from an open source model to software development. Um, not just all the great software you get to use and build upon, but also the, all the advantages that come from engaging with the community. Um, so the trail starts out good and it's, you, know, you see all the benefits that come. After a little while, it can be a, some companies and organizations can find it a little harder to stay on the path. And they, they may start to get aware of, they get deeper into leveraging open source, start to become aware of the importance of things like open source licensing matters, the importance of knowing where your software comes from, security considerations for it, start to become aware of the scale that's involved, the, that velocity of the software they get to use also means a lot of dependencies, it means more challenges in knowing what we're using. Um, and for companies that start to look into this, it, the trail can even start to look a little treacherous. The terrain can look difficult um, as we, uh, as they start finding out about publicized security vulnerabilities, can start to worry about trusting what they're using, about what the software that we're building together, and can start to ask, how do we trust our supply chain? And I've been talking about open source, but these same questions absolutely apply to proprietary software as well. When somebody's got even less visibility into proprietary software that they're receiving from a vendor, they may, may ask, what can we do beyond just taking it on trust that this is secure and hoping that things will turn out all right? And all of this really comes down to the topic of supply chain integrity and security. And this is an important, it's an important topic. It's something that Following um, some well-publicized breaches earlier this year, the U.S. federal government established, put out an executive order that established guidance and standards for the government's own software procurement. And a big piece of this is the idea of an SBOM, a software bill of materials, and that's going to be an ingredients list of, of what makes up software. And so for companies that are using, receiving software from third parties, developing it, producing it, all of this can start to feel overwhelming. It can start to feel like at the scale at which software is built and used and shared today, how can any organization hope to find a solution to manage this entire process? And so fortunately, the open source community has a model for this, the same model that we use to build software openly in the first place, we can use to solve supply chain integrity and security matters as well. And the answer is that we continue to build the trail together. We solve it with the usual open source community approach. We build, we work together to build things openly and transparently. We create trust by doing it out in the open and by showing everyone the, by working together to show everyone the mechanisms that we use to solve these problems. And we do it collaboratively so that we can build off of each other's learnings. We can figure out what are the best practices together. We can share that information together and as an industry and as an ecosystem, move everybody forward. And so what I'm going to talk about today is, as a community, what that process looks like. What specifically can we do to solve supply chain integrity and security matters? And what it comes down to is really, at a, at a very high level, it's these steps. It's first, establishing processes and practices for sharing software metadata. It's about knowing what software we're getting, about knowing where it came from, knowing where it's risky, knowing where there's potential security risks or where there's better security posture, knowing what our licensing obligations and responsibilities are, and then for all of this, using tooling to automate it wherever possible. And I'm going to go through for each of these different approaches that particularly Linux Foundation and other projects, communities, and 
and ecosystems are doing to try to help solve each step of this problem. So first, when it comes to processes and practices for sharing metadata about software, um, there's two major projects that I want to talk about that are focused on solving this. So the first is uh, SPDX, the Software Package Data Exchange. <clears throat> what it does is it's a defined language for both machine-readable and human-readable metadata about the contents of a software package. And so this is the, the language for a software bill of materials that I mentioned earlier. SPDX is, defines how you specify an ingredients list for software. It's how you describe what's in the software itself, what are a software package's dependencies, what's information about the software's composition, licenses, security references, and so on. So then, so this is about the specific format of how you exchange data about software. The complement to that then is OpenChain. OpenChain defines a standard at the business process level about how companies can certify that they've got appropriate compliance processes in place regarding software that they put into the supply chain. So if SPDX is down in the weeds of how the specific metadata about software is encoded, OpenChain is focused on the business processes, on the interactions between supply chain participants. So both of these work together to spell out the processes for how to define and how to exchange appropriately metadata about software in the supply chain. And in fact, both of these projects, SPDX and OpenChain, uh, are also now both ISO standards. So OpenChain became an international ISO standard last year, and SPDX actually just in August this year became an official ISO standard. So both of these we expect are going to continue to see growth throughout the industry as they become international standards that companies, organizations, and projects are using throughout their uh, throughout their processes. So, so once we've got processes and a language for sharing metadata, the next steps become, okay, how do we gather that data to encode it into these systems and to exchange it between organizations? And the first step of that is knowing what we've got, knowing what software we're getting. And one aspect of this it falls into the kind of broader bucket of software composition analysis tools. So these are uh, there's a large number of open source and proprietary tools and services out there that are focused around the idea of looking at a package of software and analyzing it to understand what you're getting and what it's made up of. And so I'm going to mention just two of these tools that are out there. Both of these are part of the LF's automating compliance tooling project. So both of these are open source tools. The first one, OSS Review, Review Toolkit, or ORT, is a framework for a pipeline of tools that can be used to analyze, understand, and report on the contents of a package of software, including its dependencies. And in the slides here, I've included links for several of these to presentations and demos about them that you can find online. Uh, the slides will be shared through the, the event schedule afterwards, so you can go back and check out these projects, check out the demos and presentations about them. So OSS Review Toolkit is focused on looking at a pipeline of, of software, it can integrate into a CI CD pipeline and looks at the software itself and its dependencies to analyze it, understand it, with a focus on its licensing as well that I'll come back to in a bit. Uh, Turn is another tool that, in its case, is specifically focused on containers and on container technology. So being able to look at a container or a build file that's used to create a container and understand what's both what are the different layers of containers that that one is built on, but then also diving into the contents of a container to understand what's inside it. And this is something that as containerization has become a growing technology throughout the industry over the last several years, the I think with Turn and with these other tools we're talking about, the composition analysis uh, ecosystem is building up to address these new technologies as well and to find specific solutions to understanding and analyzing them. So because containers, because their contents can vary based on the points of time when they're built, and because they can be opaque without tooling like this to look inside them, a tool like Turn will help you to look inside, understand what makes it up. So these sorts of tools are focused around analyzing software that you're receiving. But there's another category of, the, the, of uh, tooling that can help with knowing what we're getting which is in projects own build tooling, enabling that when a, for particularly for open source projects, when an open source project is built, 
having its build pipeline actually create SBOMs, create SPDX documents that explain and that define the ingredients of that software that you just built. So it's just a couple examples of this. So Kubernetes is a very widely used tool for container or orchestration. Um, now they've recently added tooling to it to create SPDX documents at build time. And they've released some parts of that as additional tools that can be used even outside of Kubernetes, but to build bills, bills of materials. Uh, another example is Zephyr. Zephyr is an open source real-time operating system for small embedded devices. And similarly, the Zephyr uh, build toolchain now includes functionality to produce an SPDX document at build time at the point in time where you know the most about the software that was just built because you've got all of the interme intermediate stages right there from the build process. And documenting that in an SPDX document that could then be shared with your, that a vendor who uses Zephyr to build their products or services can then easily produce an SPDX document to share with their own customers and recipients of their software. So these are, so whereas the first tools I mentioned are about analyzing software that you're receiving, this is about kind of on the other end, producing build, uh, metadata about the build process at the time that software is being built. So various aspects of trying to improve the broader ecosystem's knowledge of knowing what software you're getting. So then the next step beyond that, kind of once you know what software you're getting, the next step is knowing where it came from and doing that, knowing that in a way that's verifiable and auditable. And so there's projects focused around this as well. So just a couple of them to mention. SigStore is a set of open source tools for signing software and verifying signatures in a more automated and transparent way. Uh, it includes a root certificate authority for short-lived code signing certificates. So tackling various aspects of the problem of signing software. And similarly, Intoto is another project which is focused around standards and tooling for securing the supply chain. And its particular focus is on recording and attesting to metadata about the particular steps that were taken in the creation of software. So Intoto helps to create a verifiable record, not just about the end product of what's de delivered to end users, but also about the integrity of the steps taken to actually build that software. And as part of this also, SPDX in its next major version is looking to develop a profile that's focused on metadata for this particular type of build and provenance metadata. So then moving on, so in addition to knowing where software came from, knowing who created it, what, the, what its provenance is, an additional thing you want to know certainly is, is it risky? How was it built? Um, what's the health of, particularly for open source projects, what's the nature and the health of the community that built it? And there's a number, similarly, there's a number of different projects and efforts that are going into tackling this and answering this question. So name a couple of them. Um, OpenSSF is a collaboration where community members are working together on approaches to improving security throughout the open source ecosystem. There's a bunch of working groups that are tackling a variety of different security-related topics. Just one example is the idea of security scorecards. So these are a set of automated checks that are run against a target project. They'll produce a grade that tries to measure the overall security posture of that project based on various metrics in an objective and measurable way. Um, another one that many of you, if you're involved with, with creating and contributing to open source projects, you might be aware of the CII best practices badge. And this is an effort that's been around for quite a while. It's now been folded into OpenSSF. And it defines a set of criteria to which open source projects can self-certify to demonstrate that they're following best practices in the way that they manage security considerations, that they handle receiving and managing reports of vulnerabilities and so on. And there's over 4,000 projects that have participated in this badging program that have either gotten self-certified or are in the process of doing so. Uh, and then similarly, Chaos, the Community Health Analytics Open Source Software Project, is similarly focused around creating standards and tools around measuring different metrics of a project's overall health. Parts of this are focused on risk. Other parts are focused on participation, involvement from the community, understanding what the project's community looks like so that you can understand whether a project is maintained, maintainable, and so on. And so each of these are different mechanisms that are focused on moving projects in the right direction. So 
defi both defining what it means to have good security practices to be a healthy project community, but then also enabling metrics and tooling so that projects can communicate to their ecosystems that they are healthy and to have the metrics and the numbers to back that up. Uh, and then similarly, as with the build and integrity uh, piece of it, SPDX for its next major version is also developing a profile that's focused on communicating vulnerability and defects metadata. Uh, so then in addition to this, in addition to knowing where software is risky, another aspect that's not as focused on security itself, but that's closely related to it for many companies is compliance and licensing matters. So knowing what our responsibilities are for third-party software that we're using, producing, and distributing. And so there's a number of different, wide variety of tools out there similarly that are focused on helping to answer these questions. I touched on a couple of them already for Turn and OSS Review Toolkit. Another project that's also part of the automating compliance tooling project is Fossology, uh, which is a light, really a uh, license scanning tool that's focused on looking closely at the contents of software and at different license relevant statements that it contains. Um, many of, I, I already mentioned SPDX earlier. Uh, SPDX really grew out of uh, trying to solve this problem and focusing on uh, original, original major focus was on licenses and a uh, curated set of license IDs. That's the SPDX license list that many of you are prob probably encountered and familiar with. Um, and in kind of building on top of SPDX, there's the re reuse software project from the Free Software Foundation Europe, which leverages SPDX IDs and includes some additional recommendations for ways that projects can communicate their licensing information in a, in a way that's automatable, that's easy for tooling to process, and that's easy for downstream users to look at and understand. And reuse practices have been adopted by the Linux kernel and a number of other projects to help them in, in just take, take practices recommended by reuse and help them uh, communicate that information downstream. So then with all of these, I know I've thrown a lot of different tools at you and a lot of different practices and, and recommendations. The last aspect of this is taking tools to that help solve different parts of the problem and using them to automate things for your organization wherever possible. So a lot of open source and, and proprietary security, license compliance, and so on starts out in a very manual fashion. When that stops being scalable, companies look to use tooling to automate it wherever possible. And that's never going to be a 100% solution. There's always going to be humans in the loop. But hopefully, these different tools and practices can help with improving and scaling your practices. So with all of this, then, just to turn to a few takeaways, um, the first one is really, I would recommend you look at your own organization and first understand where it fits into the supply chain. What software do you receive from upstream? What do you put into the downstream in terms of software? What do you provide to your customers and to the broader community? Once you understand that, look at specifically how your own organization receives, creates, and delivers software. This is something that will vary for every company. Every company is going to have a different process by which they build and release software. And that's why there's never going to be the one tool that will solve everybody's supply chain problems in all cases. Anything for your own organization is going to be tailored to your own practices and the way that you create and deliver software. And so pulling these different tools in to solve, uh, to, to, to address different gaps in your practices and processes can help you to build, to fill in those gaps and build a solution that works for your business. Uh, I'd recommend that you look at the different tools I've mentioned and that other, pro other projects that are out there around uh, compliance and security. Uh, start using them where you can to fill those gaps. Start small and make continual improvements so that you can see uh, so that you can see quick wins and get better over time. And then I'd say start getting involved in these communities. There's nothing that can help improve your own your own uh, security like getting involved directly working with other other people who are trying to solve the same problems and to work on it together to find best practices. And really, the answer here is that, by collaborating, by working together, we can make it to the summit together. We can solve supply chain problems, and it'll be worth it once we get there. So thank you.